Because I, you have to ask bosses about it because he's been talking 15 minutes for my slides. Anyway, so any questions? We can linger upon some slides. You want uh, some slides you never understood? We have a lot of time, don't worry. There will be some reputation of slides also as uh, Madhu uh, comes up and also as uh, Dr. Vivek sir shares. We have a lot of industry knowledge. You know what is the investment, where we are going, and where we are heading to in the drone, and what are the manufacturing, uh, what are the startups who are there in the manufacturing, how about insurance. So, you know, we will be addressing all these questions. You know, where we stand today as India and how our exports, what is the market in export? What is the Indian market as such for commercial as well as for defense? So all these analysis will come one by one. So if there's no question, I will hand over the session to Mr. Madhu. Madhu sir, please. And we are always available here, you can shoot any question at any time. And however silly your question may be, don't worry, we all have some silly questions. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is Madhu here. So I think uh, Vivek and uh, the other directors are so generous in their heart, calling me the Shahar Khan of Drones. I'm very humbled to hear that. Um, basically, uh, I exactly know what not to do. So that's where my strength is. Because we have been to the entire gamut of the drone sector. Uh, before that, I'll give a background about me. Uh, I'm a patent holder. Okay? I'm an angel investor myself. I have invested in five startups. So out of which four have, you know, break even as of today. And I'm a story writer. I you know, run a blog called Mad Times. Uh, mad about drones. Okay, so I'll share the link to do that. And um, uh, plus, I've been in a company where I've taken the phone to an IPO. Uh, so that is about me. And uh, about Garuda Aerospace, uh, we are India's largest uh, agri drone manufacturing company. Mahindra Singh Dhoni is our investor. Uh, PM Modi uh, launched our drones uh, this year. And uh, till now, we have raised $5 million. Hopefully this week you will see that we have raised another $12 million and uh, uh, very soon uh, we are a company which is going for IPO this year. So if at all we go for IPO, my humble request is to buy the shares okay, and let them make us grow. So the uh, what we exactly are trying to do is that we all agree that there is an anti-Chinese uh, sentiment happening globally and we are a company trying to disrupt that part. So if we as a Make in India company try to make a drone and then go into the international space, we would be able to be in the cloud of anti-Chinese products globally. So why uh, why we chose agriculture sector is that it's an interesting max. So I think you should have a paper and pen to write it down. So India's agricultural land market is 40 crore acre. Every crop requires eight times of spraying, four times in Kharif, four times in Rabi. Every farmer pays <laughs> around 400 rupees to 700 rupees per spray per acre even now. So, you multiply 40 crores acre into eight times into 400 rupees is the market size available for an agricultural road spraying out of which we have captured 5 crore acre into 400 rupees into 8 times as of today. So we as an agricultural drone company made a 15 crore turnover last year with a 20% net profit. This year we are hitting 80 crore turnover with a 14 to 18% net profit. That is why investors are lying in queue to invest in. So that's the background. So the market is we are talking Seriously, around 40 crores into 400 rupees into 8 times every year. So that is why we are in the agriculture sector. So if you really want to be in the drone sector, you should get into the dynamics of the trade. So that is about the agri sector here. 
Okay, and every node has got close to somewhere 50 to 60 components. Okay, out of which 50% of these components are being imported, like the cameras, like the semiconductor chips, like the frames, because India is still not yet developed the robust ecosystem. So now you multiply, okay, India needs around 10 lakh drones in the next five years. So 10 lakh drones divided by two, 50% of parts into 50 times is the import which is going to happen where if we collectively work with Dr. Basu and say that we can finally make a Make in India factory here, for these parts we are also improving jobs, we are also increasing the economy. So that's the area where we are hitting today. So, so I made a simple slide, okay, so which will give you an overview of you know what we are doing. So I'm, I'm not a PPD guy. So, I shy away from making PPPs. But I'll show you something point blank. So, this is the agricultural drone. So, what we have done correctly here is that the firmware which controls the drone, the software which manages the drone is ours. So, we have built that in our tech stack office in IIT Madras, where today, because I believe drone is a hardware. It can be replaced in the future. So the tech stack and the firmware and the controller is the brain of the drone. So that is where we are evolving down the line. Now, so if you get into a drone sector straight away, so there are some schemes which have been offered by the government. Today, we as entrepreneurs and you know, uh, if you are a decision maker, you will be able to uh, get more from this guy. First of all, there are so many technology development funds available in the central government schemes which if you are an entrepreneur and you are registered correctly either as a drone provider or a drone uh, manufacturer or as a drone uh, OEM partner you will be able to access this fund from the central government as a grant. Also many state government has come up with various schemes across Pan India where if you are coming under these categories you would be able to tap somewhere between 5 crore as a grant itself for your startup or your, M or your SME or your MSME unit. Second one is that, so the government has also started a PLI scheme, which is the production link incentive schemes. It usually, uh, these schemes are, are, are meant for the manufacturing in the automobile sector. Of late, they have started into crores. So the initial budget which they kept was 100 crores. Then they moved down to 220 crores. Then we move down the budget to 800 crores. Today we are talking around 3000 crores of budget available by the PLI scheme, by the central government for the drone manufacturers, OEM players and service providers as of today. So um, if you want to do something bigger, then you should actually get into these schemes, you know, show something, be a part of the ecosystem, try to you know, uh, you know, capture these government grants and then build your product. So what Garuda has done correctly and you know, uh, what I have built correctly is a complete drone ecosystem. So right from the agricultural universities to the you know, Krishi Vikyan Kendras, to the uh, farm producing companies, to the agro officers, to the central government, to the state government, to the universities, to the professors, to the lecturers, to the SME players, to the components, to the component manufacturers, to social media, to the training, I have built this entire circular economy. Which is why we as a drone company know how to make profit, know what not to do and how to pull this grant from the government correctly. This is what I have done over the period of years. And the third one is that, so uh, we also uh, went to AIF, which is the Agricultural Infrastructure Fund. They have around 1 lakh crores of uh, investment uh, ready to give it to the entrepreneurs. So you as an entrepreneur, you may have a cash flow problem. You may have not have the budget. So today AF is willing to give an entrepreneur who buys the road at a rate of interest between 2.5 to 3.5 percentage per annum. So all you need to do is to you know, uh, register the portal, have a minimum uh, credit worthiness, buy the drone, get the subsidy from these areas, work on the business model, ensure that you make profit either in terms of manufacturing or in terms of services or in terms of technology. So uh, AF is a big boon the entire drone ecosystem wherein you have got 1 lakh crores 
of loan ready to be dispersed by the central government to the entrepreneurs available in India. The fourth one is the uh, uh, smart uh, mechanization system. So, uh, see, whenever there is a uh, whenever there is a government trying to push an industry, for instance, you all know that how the EV market is boosted. You all know how the mobile market has been boosted. You all know how the car market has been boosted. So, whenever there is a government of India boost for a particular sector, it's a big boost. So, today the government is trying to support drones. So, what they have done is that so they they made four categories. If you are a farmer you will get the drone absolutely free of cost. All you need to do is to buy the drone and then apply for the scheme. You will be reimbursed by the government over a period of three years time. If you are an agri university and you are trying to promote the drone from the uh, from the you know, college or the university level, you would be able to get around 50% uh, uh, subsidy from the government for the same agricultural drone. If you are a farm producing organization, do you know what is a farm producing organization? 100 farmers make one FPO, farm producing organizations. India has got around 5,000 farm producing organizations. We are working with 3,000 FPOs. India is going to build another 5,000 FPOs in the future. So this is what FPO. So 100 farmers, if you are coming as an FPO, getting registered into the central government, you get a 75% subsidy by the government. So in your district or in your taluk, you have 100 farmers, you are an FPO, you go buy a drone, the drone is subsidized by the government at a 75% interest. And the last one is that the private bank schemes. Uh, uh, Dr. Gabriel, I think I would like to uh, uh, differ a bit. So the drone was not invented during the 17th century. I think it was invented by my who was Ravana's assistant because he was able to carry the transportation drone by carrying Sita from India to Sri Lanka. So I think I call it as a drone. I call it as a pushpa. Do you all agree? Yes. 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 So I call it as a pushpa. I went to Union Bank of India, sat with the directors. We made a product called pushpa loan. So today if you go to Google and put pushpa loan Union Bank of India, you will see that they have actually taken my word made a product for pushback loan, which is a drone loans for the sector. So I'm proud of it. <laughs> you can send your Sita, okay, not other Sita actually. <laughs> it's a dangerous game. So now the banks have started understanding this. Okay, let's try to support the drone industry. So once you have a type approval for the drone, once you are a serial entrepreneur over there, you will see, uh, you can go to any bank uh, and then try to avail this loan. So basically, they are trying to now think a drone like a tractor, like a pesticide, like a fertilizer industry. So it's booming now. We are just starting, just starting. So in the next five years, you will see the drone booming up in a very high scale. So in future, you will see fintech companies talking drones. You will see majority national banks giving loans. You will see finance companies giving loans. All these things will come up. So we as a company are already in that sector today. And I'm very proud that Union Bank of India took the name Pushpak and then going to Pushpak loans. So with this, I'm ending my conversation because we have got a timeline. Any doubt you have, we can always talk about on this subject. So we have got private uh, banks, we've got the AIF, we've got the central government schemes, we've got the FPO subsidies, we've got the PLI schemes, we've got the technology development funds available, we've got the state government funds available. If you are an entrepreneur in drones, either in technology or in the manufacturing or into services. So the market once again is 40 crores into 6 times into 400 rupees every year is the market. Whoever has got the gut to chew can chew. Thank you very much. Basically some crops require 6 times of spraying. Chili requires 12 times of spraying. Some farmers pay 400 rupees. Some pay 300 rupees. In, uh, uh, in, inside Telangana, people pay 950 rupees before dollars. That's also happening. So it's a market how you choose the crop. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, so very few manufacturers are going to uh, qualify for the PLI. We are one. So they are actually working on the schemes for PLI. So very soon you will see that uh, so the government will start giving us grant 5 crores and 10 crores for you to, uh, for you to start making these products. 
because most of the products are being most of the components are being imported, like the cameras and the chip boards, etc. So they're trying to talk to the manufacturers if we can you know, indigenize these components so that we'll be able to uh, make a product in India and reduce the imports from other countries. Yeah. Because Thank you very much. In the case of drone, what would be the net the net uh, gain of drone The import of parts, yeah. the export of today as of now, I think sixty percent of the parts are being imported today. So we are trying to reduce this bridge by local manufacturing opportunities more than yes, yes, that's happening. So in fact, uh, in fact, uh, back in South India, we've been approached by many. Uh, uh, Local MSME companies and SME companies asking us to uh, give us the designs what they do, product manufacturing and that part. So things are happening now. That's why I said I exactly know what not to do. Thank you very much. I'll be available again and we can try to collect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before I request uh, Mr. Ramesh, the product here is Lawrence and Mayo. Uh, to come up. I just want to uh, inform all of you that after the lunch, we have got a provision. So whoever is interested to know uh, or uh, to get down to the business of uh, making drone, to know more about uh, the financing uh, availability. So on the fifth floor, we have arranged for one-to-one -one discussion on uh, on the starting of a business or startups or whatever. Okay. And uh, we have with us also uh, Mr. Vishwajit Sarkar, who is our IPR attorney, you must be knowing that you know, uh, Technology Center of uh, EPC India has got an IPR cell, which can assist any type of collaboration which happens. So he is there to do the uh, due diligence to organize for the legal uh, agreement, uh, commercial agreement, and also for patenting of the product. So uh, we'll have him also in the afternoon to have a one-to-one -one discussion. I now request uh, uh, Mr. Ramesh to start with this motion. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is K. K. Ramesh here. It is a privilege for us to be here today with our uh, Honorable Director, Dr. Vivek Mandansa, and now that is here, Mr. J. B. Rosa Kumaran. And it is, uh, we are thankful to Dr. J., uh, Mr. J. DJ Basu, sir, and uh, Sudhiran Gupta, sir, and Mr. Madhu for uh, giving us this opportunity to present the Borda. Technology of the drone and the motor payloads. I am going to what is the UAV it is just now Mr. Gabriel explained you. UAV is the unmanned air vehicle. These are all the components of a UAV. The drone is in the technical terms is called as a UAV unmanned air vehicle. It is a there are different components. UAV is this is the main drone to control the drone. There will be a communication box or a job stick or some communication device will be there to send the command because drone is flying at some time depending upon our requirement it is flying from 100 meters to 200 meters to 80 to 20 kilometers also. To send the commands from our ground control station or from a home station there will be a communication uh, device will be there that is called as combat and also an operating software. Most of the Indian manufacturers, they are adopting their own software, like our Broda Aerospace and all, they are developing their software. And also there are some out, uh, open source software that can be imported, uh, downloaded and we can do some modifications and we can use those software to send the commands through the communication path to drone, to while the drone is flying. Like drone is, since the drone is a flying object, sometimes during the unavoidable circumstances, instead of doing the auto landing system, we used to to land that road manually by controlling with the joysticks by sending the command to the test. So there will be a control box also will be there. So these are all the overall components of a road. If you see here, particularly coming to the road, there are uh, different components. The main is the body of the road and the frame of the road. And this is a flying object, there will be propellers depending upon the Type of the drone, which is a hexacopter, six propellers, four sets of propellers. And the key is the payload. Depending upon the application of the drone, we have to fix the payload, like it is for mapping application, photogrammetry payload, for agricultural application, a different payload. For videography, we will use video payload. And for 
thermal applications, the heat observation and all we use the thermal payloads, radiometric thermal payloads for calculating the for finding the temperatures of some body. So practically you can see it here. Yeah. So I this is the practical uh, this is a drone. <laughs> These are all the propellers. This is the motor, and this is the frame, and this is the see that is connected to the box. You can see over there the box box is there. This is the antenna in the in the tripod. And this is the payload. This is the video payload. Uh, which use the live streaming of video from the. And can also do recording like this. It will turn in the horizontal and ninety degrees and vertically. Horizontal three sixty degrees and vertically up to ninety degrees. We can uh, change the, uh, the view direction while uh, drone is in flight by <coughs> using our software, sending command from our software through communication path to the drone. Yeah, these are all the, those two are the GPS antennas because this is a drone is flying in the uh, sky and we are giving the command about the location where it has to go and which is the flying path the drone has to fly. This will be flying will be uh, drone, uh, drone will fly with respect to the coordinates we are given to the drone. And this is the battery. So this battery gives the power to the R4 motors and using the battery consumption depending upon the endurance of the drone. Endurance is nothing but period of drone fly. Because it depends upon the drone size, drone uh, the battery capacity, the endurance may differ from 30 minutes, 25 minutes to one hour and nine, uh, one and a half hour, two hours also. Thank you. So coming to the uh, payloads. Payload is nothing. The regular terminology of the payload is nothing but the accessory which is which we are attaching to the drone to get the output uh, results from the drone. The major part of the UAV solution is associated with the type of sensors mounted on over the UAV. Types of camera sensor determines for what. End user UAV will be used. In general, following types of cameras will be used. HD payload camera is used for mapping application, like for civil engineering, land, land reform survey, survey of India. Now, survey of India started a huge uh, project called as Comic Farm. All over India, they are going to, they already started the project, and some states have already completed the project. They are doing the survey for all village boundaries, including the Mapping of villages with property view because if somebody wants to see the area, because the village revenue will be mostly from the taxes collected by the village panchayat from house tax. So, when a, what, the house tax will be paid by the when, uh, individual house owner depending upon the area of the house and other facilities. There is a manual system, the manual system there is always a chance of showing the area very less and also in the village uh, side there won't be any computers and all, they will be always doing the manual drawings and all. Now with this Avani survey, every village district map, village map will be digitalized and we will get accurate area of the boundary of particular building and according to the building area, the taxation department will charge the owner the relevant tax so that the accession will be streamlined it, it will be a genuine movement. then coming to the photo geometry multi-spectral camera multi-spectral camera is used for agricultural application in agricultural application the multi-spectral using the multi-spectral camera we can analyze the crop growth analysis we can do i will uh, explain you one by one in that and hd video payload is for tracking vehicles for, uh, more, uh, for security forces to monitor the crowd uh, and to see what is that mobs are doing and in some inaccessible areas what are all the activities going on in industries and all we can use the HD payload camera. Dharmal payload camera is to see the objects which are in temperature to calculate the temperature to uh, <coughs> we'll say the temperature of a particular heating body in case of coal mine coal stacks, what is the temperature of the coal uh, stack, what are the probable chances of getting fire during hot summers. And the last one is LIDAR, this is a uh, LIDAR is what, light detection and raging. 
it is a uh, uh, one type of uh, sensor that sends the uh, light signal light waves continuously uh, one say per second 3 lakh 4 lakh uh, or 30 up to 30 lakh depending upon the cost of the lidar it can gives us a complete 3d image of particular surface which is at a distance of 100 meters 200 meters depending upon the quality of the quality of the lidar now see if you see the pictorial diagram Photogeometry, using a photogeometry camera payload, we can we can generate 3D maps of a terrain or 3D map of a building or 3D map of a street, 3D map of a village. Then coming to the daylight video payload, like this we can monitor any, you can see the view, live streaming of the video of any inaccess point point by sitting in our master control station and also during the nights also we can see there is other camera called as night vision thermal camera this using this night vision thermal camera security forces and the security agencies they will go to the remote places they will see what is happening in the place by sitting in their main control station radiometric thermal camera is a uh, camera where it detects the Difference of light between two objects and highlights the surface where there is a problem. And then coming to the multispectral camera, it is for agricultural application. Using this multispectral camera, we can analyze the crop growth analysis. So this is what we are all discussing. So HD payload, if there are two types of HD payloads that is called a video payload. Video recording and image objects also we can take. While flying the uh, drone with video HD payload. We can record the video and we can click the cameras wherever there is some suspect object is there, some suspect is there. We can record that as the evidence of that particular incident. And coming to the monitoring, this is for monitoring of projects, infrastructure inspection, crowd management, railway track monitoring, disaster management system. Sometimes in disaster management where the flights are there, the man power cannot be sent there. We can fly a drone and analyze the analyze the total area where the popular stack and where is the popular uh, damage of the flood and how to reach the remote places from different routes. So this defines a security industrial application and for security forces. Coming to the payload, uh, geometry, mapping a payload, this is all images. It clicks the images for every uh, two seconds, five seconds, either by time interval or by distance interval. And it gives us an auto mosaic map that is nothing but a complete 3D map of particular surface, digital elevation model, so for irrigation department and for analysis of the surface and to design the dams and to design the water flow of water projects or to design the canals and all, they require a 3D digital uh, elevation model that is called as dam and from the dam we can create a contour map, the contour map for civil engineering application is very much useful for analysis of the project uh, cost and all. And coming to the drainage line mapping and all can be done using the contour map and DEM. This photogrammetry from the photogrammetry payload, we can calculate the area of particular boundary. Suppose if you can take the agricultural land, we you now in olden days the lands are being measured by the revenue department by using old traditional methods of cast of stains, tapes, and all. Now with the video <coughs> photogrammetry payload, since you are getting a map which is almost very accurate to 3 to 4 centimeters of horizontal, you will be getting the accurate boundary of each and every land parcel and the taxation and records will be updated as per the ground reality and if the record can be maintained in the different levels. Since it is a soft copy, it can be stored at different kind of levels. There is no chance of manipulating at all because public cannot access that without having the software. Okay, you can take the print note, but original record will be the same wherever it is stored. So, volumetric estimations. In case of uh, uh, <coughs> mining industry and all, before excavation, what is the ground reality? After building or for one month or 15 days, if you take to fly a drone, take the photograph, do the uh, processing with the software like fix 4 d or AGS or whatever it is, we will know to we will come to know what is the quantity of excavation done during this period of uh, uh, excavation. Also, when the dump is uh, there somewhere, because when you observe any mining industry, in olden days, railway along the railway tracks, 
the balance will be kept in a refrigerator shelf because why refrigerator shelf to know the volume because in refrigerator volume everybody knows whereas in used mining uh, areas <coughs> dumping the excavated uh, mine and keeping it somewhere else and making it refrigerator shelf is very very expensive and uh, impossible so flying a drone in that kind of uh, situation we will get accurate volume of the particular drum or heat and we, that is very much efficient and accurate and time saving and then infrastructure info, uh, project information when we are constructing a building or we are constructing a big project what is the output when, what is the project uh, progress from through this month to the next month we comparing to these two images we can uh, explain the project progress then impact of assessments like the land survey urban survey building areas and all we can do this is all used in the infrastructure energy mining in government and agriculture sectors Thermal payload, video images, thermo, this is thermal photography, depending upon the heat surface, it will give us a comparison between one, one uh, surface to other surface. It gives the thermal images, it always uh, gives the analysis with the hotspot analysis system. It is our radiometric. This is in, uh, useful in rooftop inspections, pipeline leakages, solar panel inspection, abnormal heating detection during the uh, for the inexplicable points and soil moisture content of the uh, surfaces. This is all used by security, energy and infrastructure in mining companies. Then coming to the multispectral camera. Multispectral camera is mainly used for the agricultural application. Multispectral images of different bandwidths will give depending upon the application of the agricultural crop analysis. There are the 5 bandwidth, 3 bandwidth, the 7 bandwidth, different. we will choose the bandwidth uh, camera yes, right. This gives the uh, normalized different different vegetation index. It will give optimized soil adjacent vegetation index. It will give chlorophyll two map. It will give distal surface model. It will give normalized size difference that ENG it will give. This all information is used by the agricultural scientists to analyze the crop condition, growth condition of the crop, whether the all the area is covered and covered by the crop will be giving the same yield or is there any difference or any part is not growing fast as per the other parts of the particular area. So this is crop uh, scouting, we can building this we can use the crop scouting, assessing health of the crop, assessing water or any other stress, stresses in the world because if there is some problem in the water distribution system that also we can assess using this analysis. Lack nutrition assessment. If the nutrition are not yet, the pet cells are not properly given in particular area. With that analysis, depending upon the uh, lack of the pesticides, the growth of the plant uh, particular area will be affected. That analysis can be done using this yield estimation. What is the yield we are getting from this particular area? That area wise, every square kilometer, every square meter, or every ten square kilometer meters, we can analyze analyze in this, and we can be able to do the soil mapping also. This is applicable, this is used in the agricultural application. Coming to LiDAR payload, LiDAR payload doesn't give any photography images, it gives only the point clouds. It gives the combined clouds means any dots, 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 1 lakh to the, the 2, 30 lakh, 40 lakh thousand points per second it will measure. Overall, it then DEM image or 3D image of point clouds it will give. It is all used for 2D modeling, 3D modeling, digital elevation model, digital terrain model. It is similar to the Mapping payload, but in mapping payload, we will take the photograph, we will see the photograph. Once that photograph is stitched together, we will create an automatic map. From the automatic map, we will generate the point cloud. Whereas in this LiDAR case, LiDAR is the direct uh, system where we are getting direct power point clouds. By, uh, over, by overlapping the LiDAR data on a photogeometric data, that is a 3D automatic data, we will get a 3D map with point clouds on the background. It is a high accurate calibration for survey instrument application, highly accurate for volumetric estimation also, but it's very expensive. As of now, in India, LiDAR uh, manufacturers, the drones with LiDAR is not yet come, but abroad, these are all available. Infrastructure energy, mining, and government agencies all will be using this LiDAR. See, this is the mapping payload application we are doing it, uh, just now. We discussed. If you see the mapping payload with the draw image with the mapping payload, this is the 3D image of a particular location using a mapping payload. 
after processing the data, it will be visible like that. It can zoom in, zoom out. The resolution will be maximum up to three to four centimeters. We have that means a object of more than three centimeter size can be there right, with this growth. If you are seeing that, see, this is one more uh, area where the application the drone has been flown and the mapping is being done with that mapping of drone. <coughs> This is the building. What is the? I can. We everybody can measure the area wherever he wants the area. This area, if you want. This area, you want. Otherwise, overall building area, you want. From the imagery, we can calculate the area, and accordingly, the fluctuation or other uh, parameters can be calculated. This is a picture of a volumetric analysis done with the drone. So after the drone survey is done with the mapping payload, the 3D image or the other object map will be generated. It gives the volumetric estimation of the entire area, what area of interest. Whatever the area we are selected, in that area we can calculate the volume with respect to a surface or with respect to volume between two layers. Suppose if you see a 3D view of a drone image, it is like this. You can see the 3D image, once the drone is flown, the photographs are taken, it is geotagged, then process with processing software like XD or AJS of. You will get a 3D image like this. It is realistic, Victorian 3D view. Now in uh, Google also they are showing 3D view, 3D map. But the Google accuracy is different. Here we are getting accuracy of accuracy in centimeters. It is all useful for city measures, city planning, mine uh, planning and all. Next coming to video payload. It is a video payload is nothing but a camera, video camera fixed to the drone. It is flying, drone is flying, the drone is flying at very high object, very high, high, high data, around 100 meters, 50 meters, 50 meters. We can see that videos like this. It can be used for traffic monitoring, it can be used for security and surveillance. And you can track any vehicle. standing here. So forces can, forces and authorities can easily estimate how many people are there, what are the things they are carrying and what is, how they are moving from this direction to which direction. If there is any suspect vehicle moving, by sitting in the control station at around 2 kilometers or 3 kilometers or 5 kilometers every location, you can observe what is going on there. This is the advantage of the night vision camera. Now coming to radiometric thermal camera, it is used for troubleshooting of mechanical equipment in the industry, sonar panel inspection, monitoring of temperature of cold stacks, so that sprinkling of water and uh, as and when it is required. This is the one application, best application for this uh, thermal uh, payload. Suppose if you have a if you, uh, <coughs> solar uh, power plant, there will be hundreds and thousands of panels will be there. Going to each and every panel and inspecting whether the panel is in good working condition or is annually tedious and time taking. If you fly a drone in the area for 5 10 minutes, of, uh, otherwise, if you are flying for 25 minutes, you are covering an area of around 1 square kilometer to 1 and a half square kilometer. Then, if you image, download the image, this image, if you see, we can identify the uh, various where the uh, panels are not working with the difference in the color. If the panel is working, the temperature will be somewhat high and the color will be a different color. If the panel is not working, the color will be different. So, but directly one, one can be deputed to the uh, position where the panel is not, not working. He can check and he can do the repairing work without going and inspecting each and every panel. In the case of uh, thermal industries, if the boiler or chimney is there, if the boiler or chimney temperature is going beyond the certain limits, they can do the analysis with the ground and if there is any suspect 
then immediately they will go and they will do the SRA rectification. Coming to the multispectral camera, this is how the multispectral camera output will be. So there are green patches, there are red patches, there are yellow, yellow patches. Depending upon the crop time and crop uh, condition, the agricultural scientist will ident easily identify the problem and he will directly go to the particular location where the problem is the red zone or yellow zone or green zone, what is the good in green and what is the bad in red. He can easily study directly go instead of uh, manually inspecting the entire area. He can select directly go to the particular area where the problem is and he can do the analysis there. Because in India our crop uh, fields are very small, whereas in uh, other countries like uh, big companies like uh, Syngenta and all, they are doing the cropping in hundreds and thousands of acres. So this drone will give them better efficient results within short period. So coming to LiDAR payloads. So just now we discussed LiDAR payload is like this. The image from a LiDAR payload is completely gives a 3D image. 3D image is nothing but pictorial diagram of point clouds of a particular area where we flown the drone. So this is a dam. We are directly getting the 3D image. From this 3D image, further analysis can be done. If there is any crack in the drum, dam concrete, that can be analysis, analyzed. If there is any crack in the mechanical structure or the gates of the drum, that can be analyzed, analyzed. Directly we can go there and we can check them. these things. Any questions regarding payloads? Yes, sir. Of the crops, uh, so some rain zone. Yes, sir. So basically, what happens is I am uh, from mechanical industry. We are uh, doing a lot of finite element analysis, implementing softwares and all. Yes, so my question is in case of our softwares, we do that kind of analysis through some uh, formulas, some vector calculations like stress strain or load or all those things. In case of agriculture, it is just a curiosity from my side that how uh, the drone analyze show that red zone. Is it uh, uh, loaded with some software? Yes, yes sir. That the, the, the drone will take the photograph, sir. Yes, sir. After that, the software, it's for your software, will be having certain kind of algorithms. Depending, right. depending upon the reflection of light from the surface. Okay. That, that, they that are, analysis will be done by the software. Uh, that finds the defect in the crop. Yeah, exactly. The agricultural software. Yes, yes. Software. That algorithm in the software for agricultural application. Okay. Finds the object. And it use the analysis, do the analysis depending upon the reflection. Any other questions? Any other questions or any regarding software? So very detailed technical presentation about the payloads and the cameras. Each and every application is a big subject. Yeah. Uh, in hurry, just we are given a brief introduction about the payloads, what way can be, what can be used. Yeah. Because uh, Easy, every department has their own application for drones. Even if it is there in medical, it is there in uh, agriculture, for delivery of material, for uh, courier services. Everybody is now coming up now. Drone companies is also coming up now. Thank you, Ramesh, for that wonderful deliberation. <laughs> see, we have time. So if you still have some questions, you can write it down and you can come and meet Ramesh. We will be here till the evening. So may I request uh, Madhu? Can I ask everybody one uh, question? Please. Can you give me one application of the drone so, on that side? I want to know whether you were hearing it. Can you give me one use case application? What is the spray to the Sir, only one, only yeah. one question. <laughs> on the last, can you tell me where those can be used in the oil and gas area? Somebody from the last one. Anybody from the last one? Where drones can be used in the oil and gas application? Find cracks and pipes and pipelines. Excellent. 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 From this year, young lady, I've been seeing you writing notes. Can you give me a, a, some of the components of the drone? Uh, the some of the components of the drone are uh, the propellers, battery. Excellent, excellent, good. This is good. This is interesting. So I'm, I'm, I will show a video now.
okay? Um, which will cover all the points which they said now. Where we are, where, where the components are used, use uh, use cases there, and uh, thermal imaging, radar, cropping, payload, everything is combined. This is a new tool which we have. Artificial intelligence, the machine learning, 
of so much data which comes out from the uh, land or from the uh, field or from the oil and gas inspection or from the plant. So that's where we are trying to move, which means there is a lot of job opportunities for software engineers, image processing people, data mining engineers. Uh, say about a uh, 15 uh, minute running of a drone will give you 1 TB of data. Now imagine if the drone runs for 1 hour on the road, how much data it captures. Somebody has to process it, somebody has to uh, uh, make some anomalies of it, understand a pattern and then give it to the customer at a price. So in the future, uh, data as a service for drones will be a big business. So that also means that if you are an entrepreneur in the IT sector, you should be able to look into that area. So uh, some of the technologies which we use in the drone is the, uh, you know, uh, some are in the app part of it. Now some come, uh, I mean, we need to have amazing servers required. So we use Amazon servers. So I think India is eventually coming up with their own servers. So we are trying to see how uh, the Indian servers can be used. So uh, today this case study is about drones in the agriculture part. So uh, over here, uh, you know, India has got uh, around uh, 90 varieties of crops. <laughs> Pan India. Each crop behaves in a very different way. Each crop requires a different amount of soil, nutrition, and water. Do you agree? Yes. yes. Yeah. So the uh, so the, uh, the spraying uh, uh, or the you know uh, the harvesting or the cultivation of a paddy in Chennai is different for a cultivation process in West Bengal. Do you agree? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now imagine for all the 99 crops, we have done a complete AI model. Which means we have taken the drone, gone pan India, at least around uh, say 100,000 uh, acres of paddy, 100,000 acres of chili, like this of 99 varieties of crops. We have sprayed, we got the data, managed the data, understood the anomaly, understood the learning pattern, understood what not to do, how the crop behaves. So we started then talking to agri scientists. That's where we started talking to agri universities to give them their brain their knowledge, their crop, and eventually how this knowledge, this learning, this data can increase the yield of the crop. Today, our agricultural drones are able to increase the yield of the crop somewhere between 18% to 24% based on the crop, based on the land, based on the moisture, based on the weather conditions. So that is where we are moving step by step. So before uh, uh, we have a pilot who will, who will operate the drone, he will, so this drone will actually measure the volumetric ratio of the water, the dilution ratio of, with the pesticide and the chemicals and the water, the area of it, and then make an anomaly for the crop because we already have data. So the field data and the past data and the government data is embedded into an algorithm and then say this crop today in uh, Kolkata for Chile requires this amount of chemicals, this amount of water, this amount of uh, no, uh, side, which is our knowledge board. So why investors come to us and give us money is because this is the patent, this is the knowledge board we have across all the crops. So because we believe this this particular knowledge board itself will be worth around a billion dollars eventually as it moves forward. So that's where we are. So uh, because when we started uh, making drones, it was a hardware mindset. Slowly we felt that you know we need to improvise on the tech part of it, which is where we are now uh, working with IT Madras and other research organizations where we have a separate field officers, agri scientists, agri engineers, drone engineers, aviation engineers, business people, R&D people, finance people put in a room to come with a model. Because scientists will always give a big budget, which I will not agree. Okay, and so I need a finance guy to tell them to work within the budget. Without the knowledge, I will go mad. So I need to work with the agri scientists. They will they will give a big list. So we need to undertake that. So it's not always uh, you know you need to have the knowledge. It's the knowledge how you apply. So that's why we are very strong today. In fact, this is our engine. So this is a complete tech stack engine. So today you know we are able to measure the data of the land. We are able to understand the uh, you know uh, soil uh, content through the drone itself by mapping, we are able to understand the existing crop level whether there is a pest or there is no pest in it. If, if there is a pest, it will, uh, it will uh, change the inner dilution ratio, more chemicals will go in that area. If there is no pest at all, very little chemical will go into that area. 
And then you can also uh, <coughs> measure the uh, water uh, input, the farm level, the crop level. Eventually, it goes into a quality checks. So before the drone even actually flies it, we'll have 14 standard operating procedures for the crop, for the soil, for the land, and for the drone itself. So this is another complete combination of how it works. So today, you know, uh, uh, the people think that you know I can make the, if you and me sit together for four months, we'll we'll come to the drone easily. You can also go to the field. You can also spray, but the yield will not increase. You are just uh, we're trying to spray something because there is no data, there is no mathematical model, there is no logic behind the spraying of the chemical. So people keep uh, Syngenta, Coromandel, Mayer all come and ask, what is the uh, dilution ratio of paddy for our chemicals into your drones? Because they are coming out with nano chemicals, perhaps. This is a separate R&D, it's a separate business line, it's a separate career growth, it's a separate training center. So how do you bring nano chemicals into water, into drone, into spray, into 19 varieties of crops? Because one formula for a paddy is different from one formula for tomato. So there's a big research, uh, big business is going to come up for which you need training. So there's a lot of uh, training opportunities in this line which Dr. Dr. Vivek will be able to uh, update. So eventually this entire data is going to be into edge software where we'll have an AI part of it. So we'll have a, then the machine learning, so the drone itself. Uh, takes the data, starts spraying accordingly uh, based on the weather and the input which is feeded and the input is already there. This is the IP of our product. Eventually, what is going to happen in, in the next two years? Imagine I spray Pan India for our 19 varieties of crops. I have lots of data. Eventually, what I'm going to do is that I will be setting up agri clinics everywhere. So all the retired officers can join me, be in the agri clinic. Talk about drones, talk about agriculture, talk about the soil, talk about the farmer because agri uh, officers know the farmer more than us. We are a technology company, we are not an agri company. But he is an agricultural officer who is retired. So even we will be having around 70 to 80 agri clinics in India so that the technology adoption of a drone with technology into a crop, into a, a specific crop in that area, in that taluk through the agri officer will be established quick. That's where we are heading. So uh, some of the uh, use case or you know, what are the benefits of technology in the drone is that A, you will be able to save water. Where 100 liters of water has been used, we have used only 30 liters of water. Where 80 percentage of chemicals have been used, we have you know, reduced to only 20 percentage. Where uh, 70 percent of uh, pesticides have been used, we have again Probably drastically, yeah. So one uh, one man can spray at least around three to four acres a day carrying the you know manual knapsack. We are able to do twenty acres a day. So that's the kind of volume the, the, the technology brings into the agri drones. So as as he told earlier, so drones can be used for soil analysis. Many insurance companies are talking to us because every farmer has got a, a land and sometimes they get burned, they don't get insurance for it. So the bank doesn't have the data. Because the farmer says, I have you know, uh, 10 acres of uh, farmland and it got burned. So, and the uh, bank doesn't have the data. That's where insurance company, insurance loss adjusting companies approach us to use our drones to do a pre uh, harvesting data, the post harvesting data, compare it, have a logic, and then reimburse the uh, claim. This is where, so drone in the insurance sector is another business. I believe eventually insurance agents, insurance companies will start taking this as a business and they will grow separately. Again, so uh, as I said, so these drones can be used for mapping in the crop at a pan India uh, level and this is the data which should be given to the agri universities, agri clinics, Krishi Vikyan Kendras, 5000 farm producing organization, 3000 farm producing companies, if Co, Bayer, all these people need this data, which is where we are going, which is the mother of the entire agricultural part of it. And we believe if we do this correctly with the ecosystem, with the entrepreneur, with the drones, with the technology, we will be able to increase the GDP of the country. So this is where, so what we are trying to do is a complete grassroots level technology adoption where every farm, 
every uh, taluk, every district is trying to get into this adoption. So if you remember, I told that India will need around 5 lakh crores. Nobody asked me how, why. It's, it's a simple mathematics. India has got 5 lakh villages. So each village would have a drone is my vision. And is required. So if you have 5 lakh drones, we need at least 20 lakh pilots for it. We need at least uh, 15 lakh accessory people, which I think Dr. Vivek will be able to tell you. How the career aspects, how, the, how an entrepreneur who wants to be an entrepreneur can come into the drone industry. So this is the impact uh, of a drone from a conventional spray with a drone spray. So if you see in terms of time, water, fuel, pesticide and the cost, you know, we are almost efficient with the drone. So this is about it. So in case if you have any uh, doubts on the tech part, how the drone can be, uh, I mean how to even think about it, so you can always come and talk to me later. Because this will actually open a big business for the drones in the software, in the tech part of it, separately like. So there's a separate uh, career curve coming from the tech part. So because we may have people who, who do not understand drones, but they can also be in the tech part of the tech stack. Business. Thank you. So, you know, uh, we have a theory session, we have a practical session. We have a theory session there, we are giving you practical how the use cases come in correctly so you are able to have a clarity of you know how the drone industry itself is uh, evolving. So that's the agenda. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Are you asking what is the worst effect of drones in an, in an agri sector? Am I right? You, yes, there is huge advantage of drones in agriculture, no doubt about it. There is a vast impact, social impact. Yeah, I will give you a social impact. Uh, you know, uh, with, a, with a big chest and a big heart and inspiring entrepreneurs and my team went to Telangana to spray with drones. We had a mafia there telling that, no, we should not come inside. Because, you know, they thought that we are actually stealing their jobs. It's a big social impact. Resistance from the existing uh, farmer or the, uh, the drum uh, the players. It took two days for us to tell them what we are doing and then and how we are not competing. Basically, our problem statement, why are we in this agri business is two things. During cultivation, you will not get people at all. Am I right? You agree? You agree? If you do, if you if you do not know, go to interiors, go to any farm area during your holidays, meet any farmer and say that you want to do something, he will give you the problem statement, there are no people, because every farmer wants his son to go to the city, urbanization is happening, they want to be engineers, they want to be software. So in the cultivation grassroots, nobody is there, which is my big business for me, number one. Number two is that, because there are no people available, and there are only very limited resources available, so people do inefficient spraying. So I go there, I'm the only son of my father, that, so, okay, nobody is available, I take the drum, I just keep on spraying at a 45 degrees left and right. If you notice, they will do it. You can see in YouTube. Which means there is an inefficient spraying happening everywhere and he just goes and comes without the mathematics, without the logic. <coughs> and because of that, he sprays chemicals, he is also inhaling chemicals. He's, uh, his hands and legs are full of chemicals. You can see any any guy who is actually wearing the drum and spraying his hands and legs. A farmer is not my customer. The guys who are spraying that chemicals is my customer eventually. So when we told them this, they understood where we are. So all the entire in that area, all the knapsack for uh, uh, resources came to us. We trained them. Today they are my customers. Farmer is still happy. He is still happy. Uh, in fact, there is no change in the entire ecosystem. Farmer gives 400 rupees. Till now he also gets 400 rupees. There is no disturbance in the ecosystem at all. We are not trying to change anything. We are replacing the guy. We don't need to be manual. You can sit in the shade, operate sitting at a, at a tree. The drone will go around and come back. 
you don't need to inhale chemicals you don't need to put your hands on chemicals farmer if you don't have a resource at the time you can do it yourself because we give the training which i think of the event we do that that is what we built we actually disrupted the market so in terms of social impact yes the technology adoption because people get scared what is happening and so we were able to break through because we told them farmer is not my customer the guys were spraying our customer and the biggest advantage of a drone is that when it sprays if you have a, a large multi spectral camera and you are able to see clearly all the all the sprays will spray only on, on the top of the leaf very few drones are able to spray at the bottom of the leaf as well so it changes its spray altitude accordingly that's the biggest strength in the answer is thank you especially for uh, west bengal where we have a lot of tea tea plantation uh, what all is at last uh, below the infestation to find is very difficult so drones are uh, very much part of it and it's uh, we have done something in the border and siliguri uh, so it's very important for tea also so you have any questions on that you can come and speak to us Thank you, Madhu sir. Uh, now I request uh, uh, Dr. Mendoza, the Group Director Lawrence Mayo, uh, to give his deliberation on uh, drone pilot. It is very interesting. Uh, this is another scope of huge business. And uh, before he starts the deliberation, I would like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Ajay Rana. I I did uh, initial impression. That uh, Mr. Rana is the regional and regional head of India Exim Bank, and they are our associate for many of our initiatives uh, uh, towards them helping our exporters for trade financing, for export financing, and this is one of uh, very important aspect. I requested him and immediately he agreed to uh, sponsor this program, and because they have got a lot of uh, schemes, one of them. Very common scheme is what is very well. They are going to extend financial help to the startups as well as the exporters for this type of sunrise technology industries. Uh, he's there and he will have a session of his own in due course. Thank you. Members of this. So good afternoon to all of you all, to our delegates, students, and participants of EEPC. Uh, we are very glad to be here. I am based in Mumbai. And uh, uh, part of the Lawrence Mayo group. I just want to, before we keep diving into the subject, we are talking about uh, drones and agricultural drones. Uh, Mr. Madhu is an expert and uh, the chief group officer of Guruda. Our population just crossed China's population to 146 crores. The biggest concern of the government of India is how to feed this population. So that is a big question. Uh, secondly, you know the, our two neighboring countries, uh, Sri Lanka as well as Pakistan, our neighbors, have got currently a both collapsing economy. And I can give a proud thing that our government, both at the state as well as the national uh, level, are putting a lot of effort to see that we have a vibrant economy. Uh, during the last uh, budget, uh, uh, Northeast area has been given more than 37,800 crores. And uh, West Bengal is not far behind because you have, I am a voracious reader of books and subjects. The first uh, mall uh, uh, was launched by Pantaloon in Kolkata way back maybe about maybe 30, 32 years. So when it comes to drone technology, uh, every state, uh, all of the 28 states, all should adopt it. And I'm sure the participants, delegates and the EEPC, uh, India will carry the message uh, to uh, the engineering community and to the others. So I am going to go through the detailed curriculum uh, for you all to make it as uh, light as possible. All of us have a mobile phone, uh, but even nowadays they don't even give us the training manual with the phone. Earlier there used to be a very thick training manual, 40 pages, 60 pages, 180. And used to be a number of languages, English, French, German and many other languages. Now they assume and presume that you will download some app 
and you read the instructions. How many lives have been lost uh, by children or youngsters taking selfies and falling off a cliff or falling a ravine? Yeah, but uh, no box, unboxing we call it on the mobile has got a statutory warning like a cigarette packet or uh, even an alcohol bottle that it, it is ingenious to help. I am very happy to say that when it comes to drones, the first thing the DGCA, Director General of Civil Aviation has talked about is about the safety, firefighting and practices which is there, which has to be followed by the drone industry. Uh, I will go through it in uh, detail. First is uh, after the safety, uh, developing safety attitude while flying drones, identifying and selecting different types of drones, understanding the fundamentals of the flight, ATC, air traffic control procedures and radio telephony, DGCA regulations, civil aviation requirements, weather and meteorology. So you have to be an all-rounder. It is not just that you plan to take off your uh, drone, go into an open field in a green zone. You have to read up your weather charts. There are so many apps which are available and update yourself. You have identifying and selecting the electronic speed controllers, the controllers ESC, flight controllers for the drones, recognizing applications of the batteries, chargers, connectors, transmitters, receivers, <coughs> cameras, gimbals, and other payloads. Applying the knowledge of the ground control stations, EPF, that is a first person view of the drone. Performing assembly, uh, maintenance, repair and overall battery care of the drones. So once the challenge, our electric car and bikes uh, are having the same challenge of uh, if the battery uh, gets completely exhausted. Same thing is coming with the drones. You have got 20 minutes flying, 40 minutes, you have given hour, 2 hours. But you have to monitor these things on a regular basis. <laughs> flying a drone with the instructor and then performing solo flights. We are training and live drone of flying, carrying out entire flying operations from pre-flight checks to after-flight checks while flying a drone in a simulator training and live training. Then coming to a learning first aid, firefighting, safety practice for industrial environment, recognizing DGCA their safety rules, developing safety altitude while flying drones, identifying and selecting different types of drones. Uh, Understanding the fundamentals of the flight, ATC procedures, radio telephony, developing and applying knowledge of airframes, electrical motors, identifying, uh, recognizing applications of uh, batteries, chargers. We have covered all those uh, points which are there. Identifying, selecting basic operations, uh, features of a drone flight simulator. So, not always that you have to take the drone out into the field and do it. There are a lot of simulators which are available where you can have hands-on experience before flying. Carrying out entire flying operations from pre-flight checks to after-flight checks while flying a drone in a simulator training. <coughs> uh, flying a drone with the instructor and performing solo flights, VR training and live drone flying. Uh, carrying out entire flight operation from uh, pre-flight checks after flight checks. Now coming to another important aspect is the drone registration. Unique identification numbers already have our previous knowledgeable and learned speakers have covered this. Unique identification numbers, registration of existing drones, transfer of drones, deregistration of drones. I was in uh, Gandhinagar where we have a institute run by the government of India. Every 15 days a drone has landed from uh, out the border from Pakistan side. It is lying earlier. The police, uh, it was rural police, were very scared. Of, uh, they had not been trained whether this is a bomb, it is going to explode. They would not go near it. By the time they would transmit on the walkie talkie and get help, a couple of hours, a couple of days would go by. Now they have been trained. We have got a very large police force. So, how to identify a drone, whether there is a chance of exploding or not, how to pack it. Because this has to go to the to Gandhi Nagar in a proper box. And they want to study the EMU chip, how much data has been transferred to which IP address, whether how much of the how many hours it was flying in, in the Indian in skies, all these things. So forensic science of drones, of a crash drone, is very important. There is a market, and I will be taking my next presentation. Even crash drones is a, there is a resale market. It is like after you uh, unfortunately bang your car or your bike. 
you have to sometimes scrap it and then they are getting insurance. There are people who are willing to buy a damaged drone or a server, a drone which has crashed down. Unique identification number is very important. See, our country may not be in the first mover advantage. When we go through some statistics, Canada, Turkey, Israel, Russia, these are countries far ahead of us, including America. Our country has always takes the wait and watch approach. And our policy has just come out on 26th of August 2021 after floating uh, the document and for waiting for public view. No person shall operate a drone which does not have a unique identification number unless a drone is exempted under the rules. A person may generate unique identification number of a drone by providing requisite details in form D2 on the digital sky platform. Please go to the digital sky platform, familiarize yourself with it. Unique identification number of a drone shall be linked to the unique serial number provided by the manufacturer and the unique serial number of its flight control module and ground control station. More than 15 lakh drones are lying confiscated in custom uh, warehouse, uh, all imported drones. So please don't go to Amazon or to any of these e-commerce and try it for the drone. You will get into uh, further trouble with government of India uh, because government is watching. It, it is because of the safety and security of the country is uppermost. No person shall replace the flight control module or ground control system of a drone whose serial number is linked to such drone's unique identification number without updating on digital sky platform. The unique serial number of the, the new flight control module or ground control station within a period of seven days from the date of such replacement. Registration of existing drones. So as you know, there are more than 300 drone startups in the country. Drones have been banned earlier, it was open, drones were being imported. Only in the micro and the nano are being allowed uh, to be flown without a uh, license. But there are very strict rules which have come out as on 31st December 2021. A person owning a drone manufacturing in India or importing to India on or before 31st December 2021 shall generate its unique identification number by providing requisite details in Form D on the DG Sky, the Sky platform, you will get a DAN. So you have a TAN number, you have a PAN number, you have Aadhaar card, you have a drone acknowledgement number also issued by DG Sky platform, which will uh, give you the mentioned date, type of drone, and uh, uh, the uh, conforms to certificate of airworthiness issued by Quality Council of India. Uh, transfer of drones. So, uh, a person may transfer the drone to another person by uh, giving the requisite details of the transfer, transferring and unique identification number. Uh, such a transfer, transfer should be recorded and such uh, transaction number should be generated by Digi Sky platform. Electronic verification of the transfer and transferring and identification number will be done. <coughs> then coming to basically the drone operations. So, uh, airspace map, interactive maps, requ uh, requirement of pre prior permission, mandatory pre-flight verification of zonal restrictions. So, when you say there is a uh, red zone, there may be some temporary red zones or temporary orange zones, right? If there is some VIP movement or the Air Force is doing some uh, flight operations, so you have to, uh, you can't presume that certain sector is a green zone. There may be certain restrictions which are come. Four months ago, when the Honorable Prime Minister was in Mumbai, the city which I come from, uh, an architect was flying a drone in a particular area. And that was in the same motorcade area where the VIP movement was happening. They shot that drone down and it took them two and a half hours to track down the owner. That architect, unfortunately, was his drone pilot was not aware of the VIP movement, did not check it. So this is, uh, and the government, the first thing they will do is arrest you, no bail is allowed, and then you have to submit various papers. So I request the youth that uh, send this message to all the youngsters, not to indulge in it. Once it, uh, a black dot is there on your Aadhaar card, then getting permission, for passport, going abroad becomes ready, you will be always on the watch list of the government of India. SP map. Central government may within 30 days of the date of notification of these rules published on the digital sky platform and airspace map for drone operations segregating the entire airspace of India into red, yellow and green. I have spoken about this in uh, detail just now. There are certain uh, areas requirement of prior permission. No person shall operate a drone in a red zone or yellow zone without 
prior permission. Mandatory pre-flight verification of zonal restrictions will be there. Uh, coming to the dynamic uh, nature of zoning, central government may mandate an airspace map or digital sky platform from time to time. Change the status of an area from one zone to another. Any such change shall come up into effect no sooner than seven days prior to the date of such update. So, especially Republic Day, 26th Jan, Independence Day, 15th August, and certain other festivals which are there, government restricts in certain sensitive areas of flying of uh, the drones. The remote uh, pilot license, there are divided into three categories uh, the general classification and the eligibility. Coming to the eligibility, uh, no national person or then a holder of a valid remote pilot license in this or digital sky platform shall operate a drone classification. Remote pilot license shall specifically mention the class of the drone that the national person has successfully completed the prescribed training for. So just like your vehicles, you have a light uh, motor vehicle, uh, a heavy uh, truck, whether it is an 18 axle truck, there are various classifications in the same way that the drones have been divided and the previous speakers have covered that. <coughs> Remote pilot's license shall specifically mention if the said natural person has successfully completed the prescribed form. The age, so 18 years of age and not more than 65 years of age. So any, you find any youngsters, this is a hot subject and in my next presentation I will be talking about the youth no more about drones than on about various other aircrafts and the helicopters. Have passed the 10th standard, is equivalent examination from a recognized board. Have completed training prescribed by the Director General for the applicable class of remote pilot license from an authorized pilot training organization. So the amount of money is brought out to very simple bureaucracy, red tape, politics, corruption has all been removed. Issuance of a certificate of airworthiness, 100 rupees. Issue of transfer of unique identification number, 100 rupees. Listing or renewal of remote pilot license, 100 rupees. Authorization or renewal of an authorization of remote pilot training organization, 1000 rupees. So uh, there are certain categories now which we want to talk about. Uh, uh, there are certain keywords. Uh, I have tried to keep a lot of jargon out of it, made my presentation very simple so that it can reach you. Uh, but there are certain eight or nine jargons which I feel is imperative that we cover this and we, are, we have talked about it. One is uh, BVLOS, Beyond Visual Line of Sight Operation. What it basically means that it is not that you can stare in the sky and be able to uh, uh, always see the drone. Yes, they, uh, you should not go out of that area. There are certain things you can use VR goggles, many new uh, combinations and things are there. But beyond visual light of uh, sight of operation should not be there. Of course, if it gets cloudy, if it starts raining, then you have to uh, uh, cut, uh, cut down the operation and bring the drone back to the base station. CAT is category, DSP is digital sky portal, MTOW, maximum take of weight. RPTO is remote pilot training organization, DPM is Training and Procedure Manual, UAS uh, is Unmanned Aircraft System, UIN is Unique Identification Number and VLOS is Visual Line of Sight of Operation. So one is BVLOS and then is VLOS. So with that I have done a rapid thing, it's a very heavy subject. Everything is available uh, on the government websites. Please go to the latest rules and regulations. It is uh, very well explained. Our previous speaker uh, Mr. Madhu has explained that more than 20 lakh pilots are required. Uh, do consider it, this doesn't even need to be a full time job, but send the message to the youth. I have addressed more than 30,350 youth across India, and we have a herd mentality. If your children go towards computer application, 3 lakh, 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh, and then they, there's a oversupply, quality comes down, salaries comes down. So. Uh, we have been in a very planned manner <coughs> and the prevention of honor visiting uh, uh, China about three or four times. And let us learn from the good of China. When they inaugurate any new city, I was there when an inauguration was happening, I was asking my translator, what is the gigantic, uh, they've been over more than 200 meters. And she explained to me new uh, city was being inaugurated. And the, until the premier comes, Everything in that city, I stood over there at a height, I was able to see the schools, 
colleges, playgrounds, open hospitals, everything was ready. Unfortunately, in our country, we first start the development of a certain area, then we struggle for tankers or uh, water to reach, then after that schools will come, then after that colleges will come, then hospitals. So nothing is being planned. So everything has to be very systematically planned. My kudos to the DGCA because it's a very sensitive subject. The war which is still going on and must have crossed 550 days between Ukraine and Russia is being fought only on roads. My last message to the young people and smiling faces, I was in Ahmedabad where uh, a huge uh, display of drones was there. There were more than 600 drones flying in the sky and I was asking my uh, uh, subject matter experts with me how many operators were, uh, could be flying to 600 drones and they made the beautiful shape of the of our flag, the flag of India. Can anyone guess and tell me how many operators were there flying to 600 drones completely synchronized? Yes sir. Yes, yes, that's right. But get them. One person. One person. Anyone who are yes, that's an intelligent answer, but I've got uh, some, some different uh, things. See, it's a brainstorming. We have to exchange ideas and views. Anyone else wants to know? Nobody's right or wrong. It is an exchange of information. I have taken three pages of notes from my previous speakers. So it is all today. Lord of Saraswati and Lord of Lakshmi is always transfer of information. Anyone else got a. Uh, <laughs> Any other information? So let us give him an applause. There were only four operators. Four operators operating beautifully to 600 drones. Okay. Very uh, strong drones. So that was there during our Olympics in Japan, where I think that the number was either, if I'm not wrong, 10,000 uh, drones or 1,200 drones. I've forgotten the information. I don't want to give the wrong information. But this is the ability. So the, the, this is the technology for our youngsters. Our country is the youngest in the world. 213 countries, average age is 28. This is the technology. See, we today all get into a lift. Do you know a person to operate a lift also has to have a license? The lift you are moving up in also has to have a unique identification number. And there has to be a helpline. What forbid you stuck in, stuck in a lift, you should be able to call up a phone and uh, someone should be able to rescue you. And then the lift also, if it is called the latest technology, has got a safety of a enabler. So it will go either to the highest floor or the lowest floor. And even if there is smoke on the outer sides, it will detect it and go to a floor where there is no smoke. This is called technology. So let us embrace technology. Uh, the, our gentleman asked a question of whether drones are, it is an intelligent question and I liked it, uh, about whether drones are harmful to the agricultural sector. And it, I think Mr. Madhu answered it very well. But let me take you back into history. 32 years ago, when I was in Mumbai, there was a strike. It was sorry, it was not Mumbai, then it was Bombay. Because you know, we our politicians keep like keep changing the city names. Uh, and uh, there was a strike, and computers of the Indian Railway were being burned down 32 years ago. Today, that same body, I RTC and we book uh, tickets very easily, is issuing two crore plus. Uh, uh, train tickets. So the same team, maybe many of them retired, who are against computers and computerization. Today it is a, one of the biggest profit centers on uh, Indian Railway. So it is all about the mindset. We are limiting our society by our mindset. By burning those computers down, they cause destruction. But having a positive mindset, how to adopt technology. People are not, railways has not reduced their manpower. You know, by maybe about the 35, 40 lakh people work for the railways all across the country, they have not reduced the manpower, they have brought in efficiency. So let us have that attitude towards technology and adopt it. All the best. Uh, Jai Kalgata, Jai Hind. Thank you. That's a very inspiring, uh, <laughs> inspiring uh, uh, deliberation by Dr. Mendoza. Uh, and, uh, the, just before that, uh, Mr. Madhu, just before that, uh, Mr. Madhu gave a very uh, practical example of uh, uh, every drone where uh, you need to survey a particular field and gather huge amount of data where the computer science uh, tools like no big data and all for analysis of the data is required. So this also has given me one idea is that, see, not only uh, you have 
the two technology and it has its utility being analyzed and been given to you, but also this data uh, on, on uh, analysis of different types of uh, uh, cereals or plants which needs to be surveyed, what type of insects and pesticides is to be applied. So, so depending on the regional and different type of pesticides, you get the analysis, the data analysis of what type of pesticides to be produced. This is another uh, arm or a type of research which goes in a different direction. So you, a lot of scopes is coming up. Uh, so the pesticide technology and then to, to attack the technology, what type of scientific uh, uh, interventions needed. So a whole lot of scientific uh, 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 paraphernalia and uh, the arms and the ways and means are coming out. So jobs is another huge aspect. The scientists, a lot of scientists is required, but jobs are required. So it is not that no automation thing is always dropping down the manpower requirement. So it depends on how you utilize the applicability of science. Slimly, uh, I request he's already there. <laughs> I am very oh, Yeah, yeah. I think sure, you know, sure. some are already yeah. hungry, including me. So I thought, <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'll just make it more interactive, explanatory. Yes. So I think uh, Dr. Ramesh and Dr. Dr. Gabriel gave you an highlight of where the drones can be used. And you know, some of the friends here who last also told where it can be. <laughs> but let me go a bit more deeper. Okay, where uh, what is the areas where you can take it up? Now, time approval for a drone is a big business. It's like you know uh, getting a passport. Twenty years before, if you if you have an if you are an agent who gets passport, you'll have a queue. Am I right? Am I right or wrong, sir? Yeah. So now it's like that. People do not know to make a drone. If they make a drone, they don't know how to get a type of rules that it can. It's a lengthy three months process. So you can become a type of rule guru if you understand the uh, process correctly and if you are able to apply. Because we, we are going to need some 10 lakh uh, drones are there. And even you charge, uh, you know, say, uh, 50,000 rupees per drone as a charge. So you multiply 10 lakh into 50,000, simply sitting and you know, at home you can do this. That's why I put type of approval, process is a big business totally, so you can get into that area. I'm a lazy man you know, these days, that's why I want to say how I'm, I'm going to make money is when sitting and doing all these things. Second one is the technology, software and hardware which I told you. So you can get into a tech stack, you can get into R&D of a new drone. Now the drone which we are using is the sixth iteration design. So when our drones uh, initially we made, okay, uh, we, our weight was around 40 kgs, then we brought down to 35 kgs, now we brought down to 23 kgs, it's a design, so we also to certain companies to do the design and they are not from a drone background, they are from a mechanical background, so now we need a lot of drone mechanical engineers to go through a drone process and then come into a design of it, so you will know how to make it better, hybrid model. So which increases R&D scientist is required, drone design services is required. Now let's go to pilots. Today in our office what is the biggest challenge is that most of our pilots come from a tech background. For oil and gas pipeline inspections, I have an NDT engineer who finishes mechanical, finished a one year uh, NDT course, level 2, finished one year of uh, drone course. And now he is doing the pipeline monitoring inspection. So when he talks to the maintenance engineer of Tata's, they are on the same page. So it's not a guy who is who's, who's actually coming from a market, learns to fly a drone, because each of these drones are 14 lakhs. And he is able to operate the drone, get the structural data, get the heat transfer, talk the machine language, the hardware structural language, the damage language to the maintenance team of Tata's, so they understand the same page. So every now the same concept we use in telecom. No, before uh, have you ever seen uh, telecom tower erections? It will be a mammoth exercise. Fabrication at one end, another fabrication after uh, the three meters. Then you will have a rocket who will actually pour the rocket over there. You will have a wire going and hitting the main tower. From there you will have another rocket going to the other side. 
you will have a stringing. That's how the power cable is laid down. If you do not know this, go to YouTube and see it. Mammoth exercise, brain training exercise. Today we do this in 20 minutes. So a telecom engineer, he didn't get a job. He said, I will learn drone. Came into the drone sector. Today he manages the entire stringing operations for last one to grow. So last one to grow is able to do 15 hours a day. Before they used to only 2 hours a day. I mean, they were mechanical engineers over here. They will understand the problem statement. Now, where is this used? In mountains. So, where the project cost goes very high, we are able to bring down the cost by 60 percentage. So, you can also become a domain specific career oriented activity. So, you can set up a training school only for NDT engineers to become drone uh, pilots for oil and gas. You can set up an institute only for telecom engineers to get into the telecom sector because you use vessel. Now, I have research. So, this is another interesting area where you can get into carriers because every, as I said earlier, there are technology funds available by the central government. So, only a research engineer knows how to write a proposal. You know, we think like, you know, business guys cut, copy, edit, but they know the contents of the job. So, if you are a research engineer or you want to be into research, you get into a role, make the, the iteration, work with the design people, make a nice concept proposal, submit it to DRDO, they will be able to give you a grant. It's a big business again, as a service. Now spare parts. As I told you, there are so many spare parts. BLDZ motors are there. Every uh, zone will have six motors. It's a very, very small motor. But the motor is a business again. The motor has got a design. So spare part management, it's like a car. Do you know how many uh, parts are there in a the car? Average? Can you guess? Last row. Somebody from the last row. How many parts are there in the car? 20,000 is, is, is the right number. Somewhere between 20,000 to 30,000 is the right number for a car. In road we have got 100 today because we are still in a nascent. Now as you move forward and forward, it will grow. Because you have got many varieties of drones. Now this, all these drones require spare parts. So that's another business on its own. You will see spare parts softwares for drones separately as a business. It will come up. Like how you have your mobile repair centers, you will have drone repair centers. You will see that. We have some few spares there. Those of you who want to have a drone shop, brush, motor, motorless brushes, propellers, it's just displayed for your work. Yeah. <coughs> you can have a look at it and feel free to ask all the other questions. So we will take money and answer them. We will show how the entrepreneur lives. Okay, we will start business today. Next one is the digitization. Because as I told you, there is a lot of data being captured from the mountains, from the field and the farm. Now, we, are, we as a company are looking for IT engineers who can actually you know, uh, get the data, uh, process the data and then digitize it. Because eventually the end customer wants to see only a report. The biggest customer for us is, is Survey Map of India, which is just opposite this building which I didn't know all these years. They are giving us 40 crore of business every year. We should clap and thanks, thanks to the office. So we are doing the, uh, the you know, land uh, the processing of villages in UP, Lucknow and Bangalore city. So we have, till now we have mapped around 8,000 villages across Pan India. So now this is a business as a service, show you the way. So we are looking at you know, uh, IT engineers or video editors. Video editors uh, which are going to cinema, they could come here because this is again data. That's where we are. And the next big uh, big area is where I have, I have started uh, moving myself, which is where Dr. Vivek is also joining me. We will want to be drone thought leaders. Like how we have something better experts for drones. So as uh, as you know, as somebody probably said, I want to do the Shahrukh Khan of drones. So we want to you know, glorify that uh, position correctly and then become thought leaders for drones in the next tenure area, which means I have started writing drone blogs. I just started. It's called Mad Times, Mad About Drones. Now, there are so many uh, journalists, etc., who are ready to write English. But you will also have sports editors who talk sports. <coughs> you will have fashion people talking fashion. Today, we are looking at uh, the people who can write drones, about drones, and then come to us. 
So I am targeting on aerospace engineers who are in the third year who want additional income. We tell if you don't write, come and give your report. We will pay you because we need to make this. So there is a big business for drone blocks. I believe after three four months or maybe three four years, you know, I will have some big giants like you know Wikipedia coming and telling me we'll pay you an X amount every year. Write about drones, and I think I'll be more than proud to take it up. So I'm just experimenting myself. Again, it's a learning. Nothing is right. Nothing is wrong in it. So drone PR and blogs is where I'm trying to position myself. Again, drone social media. Is there any social media company focusing on drones? There are social media companies who talk about drones, but are there any specific? No. But you will have social media companies talking about sports. You have sports channel totally. Why not for drones? It is a business. So if you are smart enough, you accelerate, put the money correctly, accelerate, work with thought and the leaders, get into this culture, and become entrepreneur in this area. I am giving you ways how you can become entrepreneur in a growing sector today. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it, and I will be an investor there for sure. Okay. Then you got robotics. You got inspection areas where you know people can make as a career. So when you say 3D printers, now every 3D printing is a big business in drones because again, you will have multiple varieties of drones, multiple use cases. Now we are talking to a railway department for the inspection of railway track. If you see uh, earlier, you will have two, three people sitting on that uh, small, small trolley and running. It's uh, somebody wants to do the job. Am I right? Will you do the job? No. But somebody has to do the job. Correct. <coughs> Eventually, <coughs> so what if we train those people to use drones? Is where we are heading to it. So today we have a separate budget. So we spend some time talking to these people. Who do you want to operate drones? Understand how it works out. We we did some trials. They are very happy, but there is a challenge because a drone cannot go more than certain uh, limits. Is that so? We are trying to work because it gets heated. So the battery gets heated. So there are some challenges which you are working on it. So these are the use case areas where somebody can actually jump into it. No oh, battery. There are no battery manufacturers here because most of the ore is coming from China. You agree? All the ore is coming from China. So if China stops that, then you know we are in soup. That's why the government is actually moving towards hydrogen, green fuel, fuel cells, and hydrogen. So if you're an expert or you want to become an expert. You start digging today and say we can make uh, uh, hydrogen cells for drones. It's a big business again. We do try it straight away. So there are many avenues for revenues, for opportunities, for small SMEs because big companies will not do this. We are focusing on bigger areas. A small company can focus on this and then come with a technology, come with a patent, or or, or say, so let's work together. We have all that to work on. Then you have your security services, which is a the big uh, uh, career opportunity. So imagine the business man talking drones, crime investigation talking drones. So you become the trainer. So you train them on board. These are all multiple areas where there is no expertise today, not even ten percent. Because drone is doing everything itself. But we want to transfer only the key element to the drone. The remaining ninety percent will be to the people. Otherwise, we become robots. We become Terminator Four. We become movie. So this is what we want to move. So if opportunities are there, if entrepreneurs are available, you can blindly take any one of the area, work on it correctly with the model, go to all the drone companies in India. Say I am doing image processing. This is my cost. For for TV, I charge you this much. They will straight away give you a bracket order. With that money, you can go to Excel Bank and then raise a the capital. They give you the fund. Am I right, sir? <laughs> okay. So this is where we are. Again, agriculture as a sign. There is no data scientist. So we need data scientist to process data of agriculture, for oil and gas, for telecom, for surveillance, for land, for tech stack, for aerial, for underground, for mining, for all the different applications. There are no data scientists. Do you agree? Yes. So somebody has to do this. So you so you you create a data scientist school for drones. That is where we are trying to set up drone schools now. Even you will see us 
eventually step by step try to set up road schools which i think dr and vivek will be more uh, more actually elaborate what is the purpose of the course it's not training training is just a small part so we are going to the core of the road itself so that you will stand out so my slogan here is that why become a swiggy driver when you can be a pilot so that's the with this i'm trying to end my conversation so uh, you can actually you know uh, elevate yourself trying to be in the, in the, in the drone sector and then you know, capitalize the leverage if you don't do it somebody else will do it right thank you very much thank you. May I request uh, Dr. Mendoza, please, to take the entrepreneurs. This is very interesting, and for the youngsters, this is a uh, program. Entrepreneurship development is a drone manufacturing. So this really happened and I promised to tell you the story. Two years ago I was at uh, the radio club, which is just at the, it's looking over the harbour in uh, South Mumbai, very close to Gateway of India. And uh, two twins were there. I was sitting with their father and some other people. And the uh, Navy Nagar, which is for the Army, Navy and Air Force and Western High Command, uh, his uh, residence as well as officers there. And in the sky, you could see there was not much noise, but definitely there was a, a, a flying object. And uh, we were just discussing, and the children said, It's a drone, it's a drone. And uh, it wasn't a drone, but uh, when we came a little closer, we saw it was a helicopter which was taking its routine trips. So the boy's age must have been about six or seven years of age. Both of them were twins. And they have skipped the subject of uh, earlier when we saw an aeroplane, you could say it was a 727, 737 or 747, sometimes it was just at takeoff, you could recognize the uh, tail and see which airlines it was. So, this is showing you how technology for a 7 year old, he's not talking about a helicopter or plane or anything else uh, or a UFO, but he says it's a drone. So, this is how it is being absorbed and I'm very proud that of our country with that. So, uh, India will definitely require a uh, lot of drone people. One aspect which I forgot to mention in my earlier presentation was drone mechanics. So, uh, repair of drones. That is a very essential and very large subject. It's like exactly like a car mechanic or a truck mechanic or a lorry mechanic. Recently, uh, there was a press cutting which I read. And employment in our country if the person is not a vice president or GM or president, anyone less is considered inferior. And that is the wrong uh, mindset which we have. A uh, plumber also in uh, in Europe, he or she comes in a car to uh, fix the faucet or some leakage in your uh, house. And I have also traveled privilege and thanks to my company in <coughs> 23 countries, 86 international cities. And labor has got a lot of respect. Any time you have got a technical ability or capability, it's got a lot of respect. So drone mechanics, there will be drone airports in future. Because every time you, what we are doing currently is we are packing it and putting it in a box and taking it back to office. There will be times, there will be all weather drones which will be parked. Whether it is sunny, whether it is cold, whether it is rainy, they will be parked. So if you got spare terraces of a lot of commercial buildings and they are in the green zone, they will be converted into drone airports. So, we have already covered all this about what is a drone and everything. Uh, our uh, Union Aviation Minister, I am not trying to boast, but I am privileged to have sat on the same bench as him. We studied in the same school, in Campbell School, so Jitri in Madhya of Sudhya is having a dual portfolio of the steel uh, Union Minister as, as well as civil aviation. He has brought in a lot of dynamism, not to say it was not there earlier, but things are moving uh, definitely uh, much faster and uh, there are huge opportunities uh, for every sector uh, to look into. Uh, we have covered already uh, uh, massively deploy, uh, deployed in the Vietnam War, 
uh, and we are seeing it currently in the Ukraine and Russia, which I spoke about. Uh, I'm coming to very specific use <coughs> cases. Well, let us not talk in the air. Let us talk practical where the drones are being used. So, acquired uh, by the Indian Army way back in 1990, they were used, uh, the drones were used during the Kargil war against Pakistan's for photo uh, recognition along the line of control. In India, use of all manned and unmanned aerial vehicles is governed by the DGCA that we have covered. Multifaceted drones, exponential growth. Uh, in India over the last five years, primarily used by law enforcement agencies. Slowly you will see a lot of multinational and Indian companies also using it. So it is just not being used by the government body. During COVID, uh, drones were flown uh, very, very densely for populated slum area. Uh, or jugis, or as we call it, the jugi jopris. At a flick of a button, the language could change. The Ravi is one of the largest slum in Asia where more than I would uh, say 20 lakh people stay. Mumbai's population is 2 crore 40 lakhs. 20 lakh people stay. There is a Tamil pocket, there is a Urdu pocket, there is a uh, you know Nepalese pocket, there are various language pockets and different artisans are there. Maximum leather, yeah. have you got the tanneries in Calcutta? There is a lot of leather is being uh, sort of processed in Dharavi. So at the flick of a button, we could change the uh, language. When 20 lakh people are staying very close, you can imagine the COVID would have spread very fast, but they, the government could be able to control it and make sure that uh, we did not go out of hand, the uh, coronavirus. Employed already by Indian Railways for inspection and tracking progress. So uh, this recalls to a small blog which I had written about four years ago. And, uh, you know, when we open the newspaper, we have got all shocking, bad news. Either there is a war, or some now today is uh, Turkey and Syria, where there's been an earthquake, we have lost 2,600 lives. But when going, I read four papers in a day, both hard copy and soft copy. On the 16th paper, four years ago, there was a gentleman, and coincidentally, I'm not saying it because I want to please you, he was in a uh, rural part of uh, West Bengal. He used to cross those tracks very often and he saw the fish plates as they are called in the Indian railways had broken. Maybe an uneducated person, he knew the timings of the trains but he was a, I would say a good citizen of India, a noble person. He took his, uh, went to his small Kohli or Jopri, took his red color shirt and ran more than I would say 300 meters and stood because he knew the timing the train was going to come in the next 10 to 12 minutes time because he knew if it went over that fish plate there would be derailment so these are the unsung heroes and heroines of our country who don't always get a Padma Kushan Padma Shri and this is what we want to enforce and uh, motivate the youngsters and motivate ourselves also that uh, just these noble thoughts, noble deeds can go a long way because uh, throughout preserving life you know when People ask me what is Lynx Lawrence Review. I say not all you know, not only are we doing it air, water, earth, soil, and many other things, uh, but we are trying to preserve life and save lives. And that is a great human thing but with our analytical instruments with our microscopy. Then the state owned the gas processing, we have covered it. One of the participants at the back spoke about uh, detection in the gas pipes, leakages, and many other things like that. Tourism. So I wanted to make this a little uh, uh, sort of lifestyle. Tourism is going to be definitely used. When arriving in Kolkata Airport, there was a very big translate of uh, the Odisha government talking about uh, you know, the interesting 7-8 tourist spots which are there. So you can take those panoramic views because our country has got the snow, the mountains, the rivers, uh, the waterfalls, the beaches, the forests, everything. So if you are good in photography, taking a drone shot and showing it and able to uh, uh, market and sell that through drone exhibitions. I know I should have a gentleman, uh, Mr. Chidambaram in uh, Chennai, he just does iPhone photography. He holds exhibitions over iPhone photography and people who are iPhone enthusiasts come to see it. So this is all about entrepreneurship and how to uh, dig it up. Telecom is also uh, very much uh, an area. Traffic management. We have got huge festivals. You know, during the puja, Durga puja year, 
complete West Bengal comes to a standstill for about 10 days. We have got various festivals throughout the country which happen, some happen uh, after every 10 years. We have got the Ganesh Chaturthi which also happens. So uh, completely uh, both people uh, management, traffic management, even your Google Maps which we use automatically can predict because the, the Google, uh, Google I mean, sorry, the phone you are having is constantly sending signals to our satellite. Many of you will not know. Do you all know the Indian satellite in the sky? Yes, sir. Nani. Sorry? Nani. Yeah, there are, besides that, there is Gagan also. You heard of Gagan? Gagan is also there, right? Earlier, we were using the Baidos, which was a Chinese satellite. The government is always telling us to make our own things and depend on our own uh, technology. So, that is also an opportunity. Disaster management. The greatest problem in our country is suddenly there are rains because a lot of climatic change. Uh, uh, the switch uh, uh, gates are being opened for the water waters. The government needs to send drones in vernacular languages making announcements. If the water level is rising to save the lives, to move to a safer area, that is where disaster management will be used. Healthcare, we are now seeing during coronavirus the uh, lifting of uh, the vaccines, food, sending of masks various other things like that. Security. Security is also a very big uh, thing when you have large uh, football uh, things, music shows, other things like that. Flying off the roofs. I was called uh, some time back into Suzuki, 700 acre unit in Busha, where they are still having a certain amount of uh, pilferage and uh, robbery happening. They wanted a drone to automatically take off at a predicted time survey the area, there were 38 checks posts in 700 acres and to come down. So automatic takeoff, <coughs> planned takeoff, uh, fly, uh, defined flying path, click the still photographs, videography that is uploaded to their uh, 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 servers and give the details. Oil and natural gas forest, uh, we talk only about forest fires abroad. We have a lot of forest fires in within our country where the heat is there, the dry grass is there. So then uh, uh, they rub against each other, fires will start off. So putting that off, spraying of water to prevent fires is the insurance we have talked about. So uh, that is things mining. Earlier we estimation of the coal uh, uh, mines and uh, piles of uh, mining can be easily done with, by drones within a few minutes. So we have talked about the uh, privacy interactive with Kisan drone uh, pilots at the uh, Bharat Drone Mahotsav 2022. New technology as a tool for governance, national railways, 3D mapping, dedicated freight corridor of 3,360 kilometers. So the rental fee <coughs> for a uh, thing is between 8,000 to 20,000 per hour. So you can easily recover your cost. Agricultural drones, we have covered it between 400 to 800 per acre. And uh, already Mr. Madhu has explained that certain crops have to require four times spraying and eight times. Earlier, let me tell you, I have spent a lot of time in rural uh, India, 180 towns and cities. They used to just supply the water. Uh, understanding each crop, how much water, a coconut plant does not require more than two liters of water. I know certain people who are just leaving the pipe over there and they're supplying waste of water and resources. So, Actually using, this is a merger, our botanists, agricultural colleges, drone technology, water department, all you exchanging the information very easily and doing it. Before you meet, go and meet any farmer, what are the crops he's growing, how much water is we put, oversupply of anything is bad. We have to, it is like salt. If you put too much salt in the food, it spoils the dish. If you put less, its, it's absence can be fed. State government is using it for the highway authority. Drones are being used to monitor assets. Let me explain this to you uh, both by the Karnataka illegal sign, uh, sign mining. So the income for government of India comes from first income tax, secondly uh, from the GST collection and third which is the biggest uh, collection is from the revenue department. Now that comes from your property tax as an individual, your commercial tax. During the COVID times of this two and a half, three years lockdown, Lot of people have put one more additional floor in their bungalow, villa and anything like that. They have not paid the tax and government is going to come down very heavily because they are losing the revenue for it. So this is where the drones are going to be used. Government is also very clear that they want licensed land surveyors to do it. 
government has said that they want to focus only on policy and they want to delegate this to licensed land surveyors to do it. So if you have any licensed land surveyor in your family or you yourself, these are the great opportunities. Drones are being used uh, in state control companies uh, for real surveillance of the assets, visual inspection, wildlife also. Uh, we are very proud that our tiger population, say the tiger which was being run since the last 15, 18 years, <coughs> has very positive results now for it. They have to be constantly monitored. They have to have a, a electronic uh, collar and detection system so, uh, to understand their movement. So all this can be done here for the flamingos. I come from uh, Mumbai on the outskirts of Mumbai. There is a thani where certain very rare pink uh, uh, flamingos come. And uh, during a certain uh, period of time, they are there. And when they move out, even certain uh, chips are being put, uh, they are being tagged to find out uh, their flying paths, which countries they move to, why they fly, in what direction. We don't have all the answers of nature. Uh, nature is very beautiful, very complicated, and we human beings are developing ourselves in understanding that. So forest is very, very important. Recently, in one legal case, I happened to be sitting with one of our land surveyors. We were able to take out Google data. We are in 2023, right from 2001, 2003, 2007, 2005, 2011 and onwards how the encroachment was being done uh, by uh, some unauthorized people and that is testimonial can be put before the courts of India, right, even be it your state courts or be it in the Supreme Court at the High Court and Supreme Court level. So even constantly, let us not be against, there are some people who always uh, cross out uh, the, whatever information Google is picking up, it is useful and we have to see the use. Of course, it should not cross out privacy uh, deadlines. So the information which is happening has to be controlled. Let's talk about Andhra Pradesh also is being used extensively for spring uh, development activities in Amravati. Uh, of course, Mr. Ramesh is here who has played a very pivotal role uh, in uh, both Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. And Mr. Gable has done so in the West Bengal. The drones have been used extensively for disaster relief in floods in Kerala in 2018, Uttarakhand in 2021, and Assam in 2022. Uh, right now, with uh, Joshimat, I have been to Joshimat. It's very sad, it's a very uh, pilgrimage uh, spot, got great uh, religious and spiritual significance. It's unfortunately seeing a sinking. How was this allowed? Why? It's because we have, uh, do overdevelopment. The, the soil mass is not such capable to hold so many number of buildings. That should have been very much planned. Uh, recently in another forum, a group of businessmen bought 300 acres of land. They constructed, uh, they started putting some rubber plantations and everything. They were one or two grains, washouts. Not a single rupee they have been able to generate from those 300 acres. It has been a washout. They have had to distress sell, sell that land. Why? Because they have not measured the soil worthiness of that uh, soil, whether it, anything can be planted. We think all soil is good. No, there, you've got arid soils. We've got a weather monitoring station department which can look into it in great detail. Haryana Forest Department has inducted two drones to monitor wildlife. We have talked about Chandigarh administration as uh, a pilot project, as a aerial view on all properties in Chandigarh. So Chandigarh has been always, 100 smart cities have been declared and we are always moving towards uh, that number of uh, smart cities are coming up in the West Bengal. So where all the footpaths, the trees will be of a certain height plant, certain trees will be planted where they don't eat into the roots of the pavements. All that is all about the smart city projects. It's a very detailed project uh, and it will take a number of years to implement. And uh, drones are being extensively used for mapping of all these smart cities and give an update to the electoral and to the voters. Business ideas of course drones, so uh, not only uh, for parachute dropping of packages, it is going to be used very extensively in the food delivery industry, by the uh, cargo uh, logistics, by the e-commerce companies. Uh, B2B drones will be for repair service, flying lessons and near apps also. So there are a lot of apps. Uh, India is also sometimes jumps technology. Our landline uh, usage in the country was very limited. Right, we jump from that state to mobile. Uh, I spend a lot of time watching the videos of Honorable Union uh, Minister Mr. Nitin Gadkari. We are pushing towards uh, hydrogen cars 
and hydrogen uh, uh, trucks and lorries now. So, yes, electrical is there, but that is again burning uh, fossil fuel. Mr. Madhur talked about it uh, in his earlier presentation. So, we have to be very, uh, when we stand for the ground, we have to face our Mother Earth and are we endangering it? Even the, what uh, Sadhguru has talked about recently, saving the soil, it's got to be very fundamental because it is all linked. If our soil is uh, being deprived of the nutrients and, uh, uh, and uh, I would say organic nutrients, we will not get enough food. Our per acre uh, uh, sort of food productivity will drop drastically and we will not be able to uh, feed 146 crore population. Uh, startup industries for a tremendous growth, or uh, numerous opportunities are there. A requirement of low initial investments lends uh, freedom. So there are a lot of opportunities in uh, drones. We have to put it down, and I would require all the delegates to list it during lunch. We can have a one-to-one -one discussion. All the speakers will be uh, staying back. So uh, right from your startup, if your planning is uh, registering a name with a sole proprietorship or general partnership, or LLP, or the op obtaining an EI number, or the getting a sort of a bank. Earlier in my work with the education sector, banks were not giving educational loans. Now the RBI has made it compulsory. A certain percentage of education loans has to be dispersed. So uh, we have got our next speaker from the Exim Bank which will be speaking about that and rental business so you don't have to only fly a drone yourself you can put it on a rental just like a car or bike rental it can get you a regular piece of income it is definitely a profitable business uh, Mr. Pamadu has been so kind to share his numbers uh, to, that is not to more, uh, show up but to motivate all of us that is the ample uh, opportunity which is there in the industry so I'm open to any questions. Uh, if not, uh, during lunch we can talk. All the best, Jayan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, this has been really a T20 match. Uh, so I think it's very short, fast. Uh, and <laughs> every cell is looking at me like this should take me off. It's so short time for all the speakers. Uh, but I know uh, playing uh, the last 20 over in T20 is uh, really very difficult, but I think given the knowledge and expertise and the experience that uh, Mr. Yajay Rana deserves, he will do a very good batting. So tighten up your belts, hear from him. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vasil. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I know all of you must be hungry, and uh, since morning you've uh, gone through very interesting presentations on drones, the hardware part, the software applications, and uh, future opportunities uh, that, that will be available in the sector. So I'll now take you through a little boring aspect of uh, this. But uh, an essential aspect that is financing. So I'll take you through one of uh, our uh, flagship programs, Uber uh, Sitare program, which targets uh, me leader and MSME sector. Uh, the format of the presentation will be that initially I'll take you through a uh, uh, background of the bank and uh, the uh, uh, broadly cover the products offered by the bank. And then I'll come to the specific uh, program. So, uh, the bank was set up in uh, 1981 under an act of parliament. We are entirely owned by the government of India. And uh, our objective is to promote uh, exports uh, from India. So, uh, our uh, products can be broadly cat categorized into two main categories, uh, which is export finance wherein we directly finance export transactions. So on, under these, these category of our, our programs, uh, we are offering finance against a specific uh, transactions. That is, if you are, say for example, exporting to a country and your buyer requires some finance, so we will offer the finance to your buyer to purchase from you uh, goods that are manufactured in India. 
or it can be say lines of credit where we give credit to various governments across uh, the world uh, to buy projects and services from India. Similarly, for project export, so if you have got a EPC contract or a supply contract in any country, we offer uh, loans to either sovereign governments or private uh, sector companies to purchase from you. Uh, then we also offer guarantees uh, uh, other non fund based facilities uh, for specific transactions. Uh, we also offer finance uh, to your banks. So if we are not directly funding you, we offer refinance to the banks to finance to a specific sector or for a specific activity. Uh, wherein we can uh, also normally provide direct finance, but given our reach, uh, we uh, use uh, banks to uh, uh, broaden our reach. The other set of programs that uh, we offer is export capability creation. Now, in the capability creation programs, we are not financing uh, based on any specific export transaction. Uh, as the name suggests, uh, we, in, under this set of programs, we uh, aim to create capability uh, or increase competitiveness of Indian manufacturers in exporting. So, for, uh, for example, we offer set term loans for setting up manufacturing units. So, manufacturing unit, uh, the entire production of the unit may not be exported, only a part of that will get exported. So, say for example, if you are setting up a manufacturing unit of 50 crore, but you only propose to export, say, 5 or 10 crores annually. So, those kind of uh, uh, transactions are covered under uh, these uh, set of programs where there is no one to one linkage between exports and our finances. Uh, we also offer working capital in various forms, uh, uh, general working capital as well as uh, uh, export specific working capital. However, uh, we do not maintain current accounts or any uh, cash credit accounts, so that day-to-day -day dealings will not be possible. The working capital that we offer is in terms of short-term loans. So it will be specific period uh, short-term loans, so 90, 180 day or one year loan, uh, which will be uh, uh, instead of a demand loan, it will be a term loan, say for a specific period of time. Uh, we offer uh, loans for you know uh, for you to set up marketing offices uh, for your marketing expenses for R and D expenses uh, for development of uh, products which uh, you with which you plan to target exports market. So all the expenses uh, which uh, are there uh, which will be incurred as part of uh, product development can be funded as part of the loans. Uh, then uh, once you've reached a stage and you want to say uh, uh, explore overseas market, want to set up a joint venture or buy technology, buy a brand uh, or set up a, a manufacturing unit overseas to cater to a specific uh, market, uh, those kind of uh, transactions can be funded under overseas investment finance uh, program. Now, uh, as you see that we try to cover the entire value chain uh, right from the R&D uh, stage uh, wherein you, you are uh, developing a product uh, to design uh, wherein uh, you know, the product development uh, support uh, is provided uh, uh, through financing. Uh, if you want to purchase any equipment uh, that will be used for manufacturing or you want to set up the entire any new unit or expand the existing unit, uh, so the loans under uh, equipment finance or term loans for setting up uh, those units can be offered. Uh, then uh, once, you, when, once you are manufacturing, you then need to market that. So uh, financing is also available for uh, marketing, uh, uh, setting up marketing offices or setting up a specific marketing campaigns uh, for export, uh, targeted at export markets. Uh, we also provide advisory services in marketing where we help you find buyers in overseas markets. So th this is on a commission success fee basis uh, wherein uh, you know, we display your products or, or catalogs to our partners across the globe and uh, we try to generate uh, leads for you. Uh, then, uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know exploring new markets, uh, we also have launched a new uh, program last year, uh, wherein we uh, get confirmations of your trade documents uh, uh, 
in India. So, for example, if you are say looking to sell to an African country where the payment risk is not available, uh, acceptable to you and you don't want to go ahead with that transaction just because of the payment risk, we will come in and give a guarantee to your bank to confirm that a documentary credit. Uh, and once uh, that is confirmed, uh, you can get it discounted from your bank. So, we will not come into the transaction, we will not come between you and your commercial bank. Will just at the back end uh, support your commercial bank in going through with that transaction. <coughs> now, if you want to expand overseas, uh, set up joint ventures, uh, or set up or, or, ha or have some technical tie-ups, or want to acquire some brands for better visibility in overseas yeah. or specific markets, so all those kind of uh, things can be funded under yeah. overseas uh, investment. Also, if you have already set up, say, some overseas subsidiary, all kinds of uh, requirement of the overseas subsidiary for financing can be provided under this program. Uh, now, coming to Bharatya Sitare program, uh, now we have, uh, in a way, relaunched this program in uh, 2020 uh, when it was announced as part of the budget uh, by the Honorable Ethel. Uh, prior to that, uh, you know, after we were set up in eight, early 80s, uh, we had a similar program running at that point in time. Uh, at that point in time, uh, the uh, profit of the bank was not taxed. So, uh, that saving, uh, tax saving that we used to have, we had created a separate fund. We had also collaborated with, uh, you know, multilateral institutions like World Bank. And set up a specific uh, marketing uh, fund out of which we used to give up grants to uh, new and upcoming uh, companies at that time. So some of the companies that we supported under this venture was uh, like Infosys, Biocom, Dabur. Uh, we we uh, gave grants to these companies uh, at that point in time. Uh, in early 90s, mid 90s, uh, our profits started getting taxed, and this uh, scheme somehow then fizzled out. Uh, we have been working uh, on, on, on revamping the scheme and relaunching that scheme and uh, finally in 2020 it was announced as part of the uh, budget. And uh, after which uh, both we and the SIDB who house, houses this scheme uh, uh, got the board, uh, respective board approvals uh, for launching this program. Now what exactly do we do under this program? Uh, so here the program basically focuses on supporting, identifying and supporting companies who have a potential to grow substantially in export markets. Uh, now the, the, the potential can be derived from either the uh, uh, differentiation in the technology that they have, uh, the differentiation in the product that they offer or the process improvement that they offer. So, which makes them stand out from the competition. So, th that makes it easy for them with uh, financing support to quickly scale up uh, the operations. So, th this, uh, uh, under this program, this is the main focus, but we also support other uh, MSME companies who are not able to grow because of lack of finance. Uh, now, under this program, we give uh, both debt as well as uh, equity support. We also provide, in select cases, uh, a technical assistance, where which, is, which goes out in form of a grant for a specific uh, activities. Uh, now, the program uh, is anchored uh, both with Exim Bank and Sidby jointly. Uh, on the debt side, both uh, <coughs> and Sidby run the program separately. So uh, all the debt proposals are done separately. So uh, if somebody is uh, considering something, they do it uh, uh, on their own. And uh, if we have some proposal under the program, uh, we consider the debt on our own. Uh, in addition to that, we have set up a AIF for invest equity investments into upcoming companies. Uh, with this uh, AIF is managed by Sidby Venture Capital, wherein both of we and Sidby have equally contributed. We have started with 100 crores. We have also you know, uh, approached other banks and uh, sought investments into this fund. So this fund will ultimately uh, come to around uh, 1000 crore fund. 
for specifically for equity investments into upcoming uh, companies. Uh, there is also a provision of 20 crore of technical assistance or contributed 10 crore each by us and city uh, wherein we offer both that technical assistance for specific activities of the companies. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that objective is to identify and support companies who have you know, substantial uh, uh, growth opportunities in, in their segment, uh, uh, which is then supported by some underlying USP. So that uh, that that is how the name of the program comes. So what is the program? Uh, which, which short form we can say USP, uh, which also uh, can be used as a unique uh, selling proposition. So what is the unique selling proposition of the company that uh, makes them stand out from the competition and which uh, we, wherein we can come sit with the company, analyze you know, uh, how, how the company is going to achieve that with the financing support that will be provided under the program. So under this program, we will not be uh, dealing with you on transaction to transaction basis. We will sit with you, we will uh, we'll go through your, your next 5 year, 10 year plans where you want to be and what exactly you will require over the coming years, where and when you will need that financing support. Now, when we started the program, the initial uh, you know, uh, limitation that we had was the our uh, you know, reach. We have a limited number of uh, uh, people, with limited number of physical offices uh, across India and uh, overseas. So we needed to tie up with various institutions and uh, you know, partners uh, to reach out to uh, a larger number of audience for this program. So we have tied up with most of the startup cells of IIMs and IITs across the country, uh, wherein uh, we, uh, we continually interact with them. We keep looking out for opportunities where we can you know, support either in terms of technical assistance to these startup cells or uh, then uh, uh, the companies which are being incubated in these centers. We also have tied up with the you know, industry associations like UPC uh, to reach out to their members uh, for uh, this program. Now, uh, this is, as, as I mentioned earlier, this scheme is jointly run by SFP and Exit Bank, uh, so the, especially the equity investment part. Uh, the city venture capital takes care of that. So here, you know, the, the main differentiation that I would like to bring out is that when Exim Bank is considering either debt or equity outside of AI, we are not looking at the uh, uh, startups. So we are not looking at the uh, uh, seed capital. So we will not be coming in and participating in the venture uh, account. So we, uh, on, uh, when you will be on round 2 or round 3, at that point in time we can come and look at uh, the equity investment or debt investment in that. Uh, for the venture part, uh, the AIF will take care of that, which is managed by simple venture capitals. So, uh, well, which, which companies are eligible uh, for consideration under this is uh, we are looking at MSMEs as I mentioned, uh, preferably with a turnover less than 500 crores. So uh, 500 crores is an indicative figure, it's not that if your turnover is uh, 550 we will not consider you. But we normally prefer to consider companies uh, with uh, turnover less than 500 crores and then how do we scale up from there. Uh, the unique proposition, as uh, I have covered earlier, uh, should be there. Uh, the business model, uh, everything uh, uh, that we consider under this program is appraised in detail. We sit with you, we do not come in as bankers, we will come in as partners and uh, long term partners. So we will we'll not be looking at uh, you know, transaction specific uh, uh, dealings uh, with the companies under this program. So we will not come in and say that if you have this experience for opportunity, so I will give you bridge and credit and all. Uh, we will not do that kind of uh, thing. So we will offer those facilities but with the long term view. So we will see as to how you will be growing over next decade or so. Uh, another major opportunity uh, is under this program is that uh, you know uh, normally when we go and finance a company, the company should be exporting. 
but we have made an exception under this program. We say that companies should have potential to export. So even if you are not exporting today, you say that today I want to explore Indian market, which is in itself is huge. But over uh, say next four to five years, I I plan to export. So this has the product has export potential, but I first want to establish myself uh, in the domestic market. So those kind of uh, companies can also be con considered under this program, which otherwise exit and doesn't go in normal course of business. So uh, the broad structure of the program is uh, say uh, first is that uh, which uh, the banks uh, do. So this uh, it can is done directly by us. Uh, this is also a uh, debt is also directly provided by SIDBI under their schemes. Uh, then equity. So uh, uh, there are two things that I mentioned. Was one was alternate investment fund that is set up jointly with SIDBI. Uh, uh, that I'll be covering in the second part. So this equity or equity or quasi equity uh, investments that we are talking about is directly made by Eximbank on bilateral basis. So here in SIDBI or SIDBI venture capital doesn't come into picture. Uh, the second part, which is Uberde Sita Sitare Fund, which is an AIF set up jointly with Sidbi and managed by Sidbi Venture Capital. There, in uh, the uh, investment decision will be taken by the Sidbi Venture Capital. Uh, we will be uh, uh, giving the proposal to them, we will be giving our analysis to them, and finally, they will be making the investment. Uh, normally, we look at a horizon of around five to six years uh, uh, for equity investment under this program. Longer tenors are also considered uh, on case to case basis. Uh, generally, to start with, we do not come in as uh, your main investor or major investor. We participate in the funding round. Uh, technical assistance, as I mentioned, on a case-to-case basis, uh, provided for specific activities uh, the companies under the program. So, some some of the sectors that we have supported under this, uh, uh, you know, uh, say recycling uh, or semiconductor chips or APIs for uh, you know, COVID vaccines, pharmaceuticals, leather goods, uh, shoes. And uh, we've also supported uh, companies which uh, are into UAVs uh, in this sector. So the com company, I will not be naming the company, but the, the company when we supported it uh, had a turnover of around uh, 10 crores uh, around uh, three, 3 years back. And uh, this year they will be closing with around uh, with a turnover of around 250 crores. So uh, there is a huge uh, jump uh, uh, with the support. Normally, in our normal course of business, we would not have supported these kind of companies. Uh, but uh, given the potential, given the focus uh, uh, on MSMEs and how to support them grow, uh, we supported a 10 crore turnover company with around 50 to 70 crore of limits, and then uh, that which helped them grow very quickly uh, in both. This size. Uh, some of uh, the additional examples uh, uh, which we have supported, we will not be naming the company, but uh, these are the segments that we have done. So, uh, in consumer goods, for example, that BLDC fans, uh, uh, so this company again is uh, valued at around $500 million today. Uh, so so, some of the companies have been able to grow very, very rapidly. Uh, based on the underlying differentiating factors uh, that were identified along with the company and with the help of financing support that was provided. Before I end my presentation, I would again like to stress that the program is aimed at, at MSME companies with demonstrated uh, product and uh, selling capabilities. Uh, it is not for the for, for startups. It is not as if you want to start some business and you can be considered a business. Uh, the technology should have been demonstrated. So you should have some sales. The sales may be two crores, three crores, that doesn't matter. But you should have some uh, market demonstration of your product and technology. So we will not come in at seed round, but once you have demonstrated that, we can come in uh, with both equity as well as uh, tech. Uh, 
uh, plus if required, we can also offer technical assistance. Uh, um, that's all from our side. I understand there is a separate uh, session uh, to uh, bilaterally discuss uh, individual requirements, but then we can cover uh, your questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the throne match has ended. This is an important part. And as you know, at uh, the end of every program, there is a vote of thanks. And that is the most thankless show. Because all vote of thanks either is before lunch or before dinner. And people does not wait to hear the vote of thanks. But please restrain yourself. Don't start printing the things in front of you. I can see some empty bottles around. Hope everybody enjoyed the program. So, uh, because we did a lot of homework, uh, Gabriel sir, uh, Madonza sir, uh, uh, Mr. and uh, Mr. Madhu, all of us have been uh, working on this. As the time was not uh, much, we have to come squeeze it to a half day program and the topics were so huge <coughs> because we wanted to cover 360 degrees. So any person who is interested to do the business or not, he will come and want to hear everything, starting from the very uh, nursery knowledge on drone to the total scalable of the business of drone. Every aspect of drone, so financing everything. So the whole thing needs, and very perfectly we try to make it designed like you know, theory practical, theory practical, on it with the speakers. So that it isn't uh, become very monotonic. So uh, the whole thing, and and we should appreciate, and the whole thing happens no, to make this very interesting. The all generous and uh, people who are sitting on the dais. So we must have the right to give the vote of thanks to these people, and of course you people who have come over and uh, participated and laid your interesting years. And might be you know having a lot of thoughts and uh, ideas to how to explore your uh, thoughts and convert that into profitable business. That is very important. So uh, I'd like to extend my regards, my thanks to uh, the team of Lawrence and Mayo, uh, Mr. Gabriel, Dr. Lagunza, Mr. Gomez, and uh, the starlight <laughs> for today, Mr. Madhu, and always you know, uh, the partner in our initiative to really boost up the business, to boost up the exporters. We always have partner with us, with India, uh, with Green Bank. Um, Mr. Uh, Rama has been transferred very recently to the Eastern region, and he has been. Uh, very enthusiastic, helping us out in many of our initiatives. So this has been when I have gone there, I've spoken to him. Then now he made a presence here and he immediately agreed, okay, let's do it. At least for the uh, Eastern Zone and of course we have expanded, we have streamed, we have streamed this whole program through our YouTube across India. So many of our uh, uh, members, interested associates who are not able to make it here, they are hearing, they are saying this program, they are hearing this program to you. Uh, I hope all of you, uh, the future entrepreneurs, the would be entrepreneurs who are already in the business, uh, would like to uh, salvage every amount of opportunity uh, this program and this tool technology and the business can we give, we give you. We're going for uh, lunch and after lunch we have organized a one-to-one -one discussion with those interested uh, persons, entrepreneurs, businessmen, professors, there are many representatives from the person. We've got a very good matrix of uh, uh, participants here. We've got students 
panelists will say we're professors, environmental heads, or interested in startup uh, uh, business uh, research unit in their uh, institute. We've got industry partners who are really interested to start up another line of business in Rome. We have entrepreneurs who are interested to jump uh, and start up. So we have got all the dignitaries here with us. After lunch, they are available the rest of the day in our fifth floor office with the Technology and Development Center for a one-to-one -one discussion. So I will then request all of you to go for lunch. Lunch is calling you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a good photo.